The dingo, also known as the warragal, Australian wolf, or canis dingo, is a remarkable Australian animal that has significantly influenced the continent's ecosystems for thousands of years. As a top predator, the dingo has developed a complex relationship with both native Australian wildlife and introduced species. This overview delves into the dingo's physical characteristics, a brief history, and its essential role in managing invasive species. If you like this kind of content, subscribe, and if you're curious about the wildlife in your area, leave its name in the comments, and I'll make a video about its characteristics. Dingoes are medium-sized canids, generally weighing between 16 to 28 kilograms, 36 to 61 pounds, and standing around 52 to 62 centimeters, 20 to 24 inches tall at the shoulder. They possess a lean, muscular build designed for endurance and agility, with some individuals reaching up to 112 centimeters in length. Their coat is typically sandy or reddish brown, though some dingoes may be black and tan or even pure white. One of their most distinctive features is their pointed ears, which grant them exceptional hearing capabilities. Their broad head with a tapering muzzle, almond-shaped eyes and bushy bottle-shaped tail, often tipped in black or white, gives them a unique appearance. Dingoes are a distinct species. Contrary to popular belief, they are not domesticated or feral dogs. People often resent dingoes, arguing that they are not native to Australia or that they were introduced by humans, especially because they sometimes attack livestock and compete for large prey, such as the red kangaroo. Dingoes are widespread across much of mainland Australia, inhabiting diverse ecosystems, including deserts, grasslands, forests, and even alpine regions. They are absent from Tasmania, where the now extinct thylacine, Tasmanian tiger, once occupied a similar ecological role. While dingoes can adapt to many environments, they tend to favor areas with reliable water sources and sufficient cover for denning. Dingoes often use natural features like rock formations, hollow logs, and dense vegetation as shelter. Intelligent and social animals, they usually live in packs of 3 to 12 members, often composed of a breeding pair and their offspring from prior years. Solitary dingoes are also common, particularly in regions with plentiful resources or higher human presence. Known for their problem-solving skills and intricate social interactions, dingoes communicate through various vocalizations, including howls, yelps, and growls, as well as body language and facial expressions. Rather than barking, dingoes are known to howl. Primarily nocturnal or crepuscular, they are most active at dawn and dusk, aligning their behavior to avoid human interference and to match the activity of their prey. Dingoes are opportunistic predators with a diverse diet that varies based on habitat and available prey. Their diet includes small mammals like rabbits and rodents, as well as larger prey such as kangaroos and wallabies. They also consume birds, reptiles, and even insects when other food is scarce. Skilled hunters, dingoes can work alone or in coordinated pack hunts. Their hunting strategy often involves pursuing prey over long distances, using their endurance to exhaust larger animals. They are also noted for their use of teamwork and strategic planning when hunting in packs, showcasing impressive levels of intelligence and social cooperation. The Dingo's Historical and Cultural Significance The history of the dingo in Australia is both long and intricate. While the exact timing of their arrival remains uncertain, it is widely believed that dingoes were brought to the continent by Asian seafarers roughly four millennia, 4,000 years ago. This makes them one of Australia's earliest introduced species. After their arrival, dingoes rapidly spread throughout the mainland, eventually becoming woven into the cultural fabric of many Aboriginal societies. They were at times kept as companions and even used for hunting, somewhat like the Arab tradition of using cheetahs for hunting purposes. The relationship between dingoes and European settlers, however, has often been fraught with conflict. As sheep farming expanded across the continent in the 19th century, dingoes were perceived as a threat to livestock, which led to extensive control measures, including the construction of the iconic dingo fence, 
spanning over 5,600 kilometers across southeastern Australia. Ecological Role and Invasive Species Management The dingo fulfills an essential role in Australia's ecosystems as a top predator. Their presence helps maintain ecological balance by controlling populations of both herbivores and mid-sized predators. This function has become increasingly vital in light of the many invasive species introduced to Australia following European settlement. One of the dingo's most significant contributions is its impact on feral cat populations. Feral cats pose a severe threat to Australia's native wildlife, contributing to the extinction of several species and declines in many others. Studies indicate that in areas where dingo populations are thriving, the numbers of feral cats are substantially lower. Dingoes not only prey on cats, but also create a landscape of fear, causing cats to modify their behavior to avoid dingo encounters, thereby lessening their impact on native species. Similarly, dingoes assist in controlling introduced fox populations, another major threat to native wildlife. European red foxes were brought to Australia in the 19th century for sport hunting, but they quickly established themselves as a pervasive pest. Like with feral cats, dingoes both prey on foxes and influence their behavior through a fear-based impact. Research has demonstrated that in areas where dingo populations are reduced, fox numbers surge, resulting in increased predation on native animals. Additionally, dingoes play a role in regulating populations of non-native herbivores, including feral goats, pigs, and deer. These animals cause considerable harm to native vegetation and compete with native herbivores for resources. By preying on these introduced species, dingoes help minimize their ecological damage. For example, in arid and semi-arid regions, dingo predation on feral goats has been shown to decrease grazing pressure on native plants, aiding in vegetation recovery. The cascading impacts of dingo presence extend beyond merely preying on invasive species. By moderating populations of both introduced and native herbivores, dingoes indirectly support various plant species and small animals. For instance, lower grazing pressure can increase ground cover, which provides shelter for small mammals and reptiles. This can, in turn, support populations of native predators, such as quolls and raptors. Nonetheless, it's important to recognize that the ecological role of dingoes is complex and can vary depending on the specific ecosystem and the combination of native and introduced species present. In some cases, dingo predation may also affect vulnerable native species, especially in areas where habitat loss has already strained native animal populations. This complexity underscores the need for ecosystem-specific, balanced approaches to managing dingo populations. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel for more wildlife adventures. Comment on which animals or places you'd like to see more of.